Okay, my friends, this is one of those days when something ends up being tragically hilarious. <laughs> I was going to do a little study on heat and really, you know, because I did, I did a very serious study on it long ago, and this is the results of my study, and it all turned into electricity. You see, uh, as a, these are all the different heat of reaction, heat of uh, neutralization, and solutions and all this business and how they they turned into actually electricity and it always turned into electricity at the end it always turned into electricity heat is electricity and it, it changes depending upon the nature of what you're heating up so basically fire is rapid oxidation what does that mean? Fire is breathing fast. <laughs> and the funny thing is, it's true. Fire is just quickly getting rid of the cheap trash. <laughs> because what you're getting rid of is the stuff way down here. Carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, all of this hydrogen. You're down in the low end stuff. Flames consist primarily of carbon dioxide. So you got your carbon hooked up with your oxygens. Nitrogen is right here too. And if it gets hot enough, then you get into ionization. That's where you get into plasma. Um, and it become ionized to produce plasma. That's ionized means free, just pushed out electrons. That's heat. We need to understand heat. And like I just said, heat ends up being electric power. All power is electric. And this is all dissipation of heat, dissipation of watts, dissipation of calories. How these things turn into heat. So, you know, there's a lot to know about electricity in light and heat and water. And I'm going to tell you what, we got a really, really, really serious issue here about water and 5G. Okay, my friends, this is what we are up against. And this is what is not understood. Our atmosphere is loaded, 100% saturated with electron particles that are separated from their natural adhesive nature to like let's say water you see this OH minus well what does that mean water is H2O well this is only one H with an O well what happened to the other H it got blown away by these electrons that are flooding against us absolutely crushing our electrons displacing electrons in a water molecule that's what a water molecule would look like all right it has the oxygen and two hydrogens well the the sun is so extremely energetic with its extremely ionized particles it drives one of the electrons away so uh, one of the hydrogens away, which means it's sucking its electron away from the oxygen. And you end up with an extremely aggressive, interactive molecule of OH, OH minus. So these, this is where our ionosphere, minus means ions. Things that have a charge on them are ions. This is an ionosphere. This is our ionosphere. The sun has an ionosphere, too. It's called the corona. And that's where its electrons crush into the other electrons that are in space because everything's spinning and rubbing and scrubbing. And our electrons, which we own on our atmosphere, it, which is expanding, this is the problem. It's expanding and crushing into everybody else's electrons. So it's making more and more heat and more and more turmoil, more and more hurricanes and tornadoes and condensation and rain. And then areas where there's droughts because the the rain has been condensed in one area and it's not being able to be condensed in another area which is further inland and so forth. There's a lot of 
interaction and turmoil and spinning. And then you have your telluric currents, which are the currents in the northern hemisphere. They spin one way. In the southern hemisphere, they spin the other way because the earth is spinning through all of these particles. And it's scrubbing. One scrubs this way, one scrubs that way. It's, it, there's a lot to think about. And the nucleus of every atom is not made of um, protons and neutrons in, in one sense. They are, in another sense, they're not because a proton and a neutron is made of electrons. And electrons are made of muons and the glowy little electron neutrinos. These are neutrinos. Together, I call them an electron. We always did consider this would be an electron because it is the explosive, glowy, sparky electric part. But we never knew there was a black part attached. That's the dark matter. And they've never known about it. And it is extremely heavy compared to this one. And that's why we can squirt these through the Venturi and they will stay on the other side. That's a whole other issue because we may be able to solve our way out of this. But there is another problem that we will not be able to solve easily. And that's the one that's the killer. All right, just quickly, I've shown this a million times too. Fifty years ago, there's two types of intermolecular forces, but they're all dipole-dipole interactions. And here is the key to the whole thing right here. Fifty years ago, the transfer of energy from light is to atomic vapor. Think of that. Lock that in your brain. Light becomes atomic vapor. Right? Atomic vapor. What is atomic vapor? It comes from light and it is literally electrons. Two electrons together make a photon. Shown it a million times. Now let's see what the consequences of that is. Okay, so let's think about it this way. At one time I used to think that heat was nothing but excess electrons. And that is not necessarily the case. In space, excess electrons have enough room that they are not concussing severely enough to create a lot of heat. Just in the vacuum, what we would call the vacuum of space, the non-interactive places in space, which is all out here in the darkness of space. Well, here is where we have an active region of space. Why is it active? It's because this magnetic field is scrubbing our magnetic field. And again, we own a whole ton. This is like our Earth right here. And around the Earth is all these electrons. And they, they just coat the Earth just like this, just like they coat the Sun. And as we scrub through the space, our electrons are rubbing the other electrons. Just like the electrons in this hand rub the electrons in that hand and I have heat. And it's exactly what we're doing here, electron to electron. And this is nothing more than our Earth with a ball of electrons on the outside, and the dark matter is inside. That is the gravity. The dark matter will always attract the white matter. It's just the way it works. And they're extremely heavy compared to this. I'll show you the light experiments. This is our problem. It's the scrub. Okay, I subscribe to a ton of science things, and they give. I, I go to the Science Alert. You see Science Alerts all over the place. Now, this is a new thing that just came out, physics.org, saying they have found a new state of matter, electron quadruplets. Now, I show you the, the electron, um, the photons, and they are nothing more than two electrons back to back. And they may call these the quadruplets. I don't know. But let's talk about what I have to show. All right, there's all kinds of new talk about the new physics, and absolutely needed. These are what they call the 2P2H particles. They come from light. These are not from phot uh, protons. So these are the tiniest particles that exist. And this is the muon, is the black one. The white one is the electron neutrino. And when they collide, they actually separate, and the white one turns into showers, and the black one turns into the electron uh, I mean the uh, muon neutrino, just exactly what CERN wants to see. We're going to get in a little deep in this. Here it is, the muon, muon neutrino, electron neutrino. That's the black one attached to the white one. And they were back to back, makes a photon. This is just an electron. 
when that concusses with something, it forces the muon to leave the electron, leaving the electron as a shower. Only in the certain conditions does this happen, and we created them, and now we can't really recreate it because it was just a fluke of luck. All right, you just saw the particles explode, and the black ones, you see the little tiny black balls there? They're all exactly the same size as when they came in. Little black balls everywhere, and they, they can't get through the venturi. The, there are the hammers that hammer the white ones through, because the white ones can concuss. You've got to see the last video I did that talks all about this. It's kind of long, but I thought it was magnificent, actually. <laughs> now, this is obviously light accelerating. It's obviously a particle. It obviously f did fission here, and it's obviously coming back together. That's fusion. This is the nuclear power that we need to run the world. And what would you call that power? I call it plasma. Because this is, this, and it may even have some more exotic name you may use, but plasma, to me, is, is the extremely energetic part of light. And that is exactly what this is. The black part is gravity. That's just pushed out of the way. So this so desperately wants to get back to the black that it is 200 times more energetic or more than when it started here. Because it, it was all bound together. Everybody was happy. All of a sudden, it, boom, they're apart. And said, whoa, 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 get back here. And, and they have to find their way back. If we can funnel this off through a conduit of copper or whatever it is, even maybe even we could use um, fiber optic because this is nothing more than light is nothing more than atomic vapor even through fiber optic all right it's atoms it's atoms moving light is atoms moving you take that fiber optic and move it around and you point it at something and it lights it up that means there's atoms coming up, i mean electrons coming out of there that case is closed and the electron is a black and a white particle and the white is the only thing that bounces all right, the black, I don't know what they do. I, they may come back. I, I believe they do come back with it at a, at a lower frequency than when it hit. Because a hit and a little bit of a mush comes out of it and it comes back as a color depending upon what it hit. That thing that it hit has a certain frequency to it. So if this one's real, and that one's just, uh, it might cut the foot and come back. Whoa. Or if that one is a real sizzler too, it's going to come back as a sizzler. That's just the nature of the interaction of pushing to shoving. If you push me and I just sort of get out of the way, well, that's you're going to glow and I'm just going to get out of the way. If you push me and I push back hard, you're going to get out of the way of me. <laughs> Well, I try hard anyway, as best I can, and that's when you get this, because that's what this is doing. It's trying to push back, and these, the black balls are coming like a jackhammer, because this is a pulsed red laser. That means one after the other, bam, 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 and the black ones are just devastatingly crushing and pushing this to squirt through. Right, this is a solar eclipse. If that's not obvious, I don't know what you can say. These are particles, streams of energetic particles streaming away from the sun. This is an eclipse, so the moon is covering the sun. But you can see all the interactions behind it. It's like a soup of particles spewing out from the sun. And we are scrubbing through those. And everything else is spewing out particles as well. And we are all rubbing through the arm of the Milky Way, getting scrubbed and heating and spinning faster and hotter and more and more interactions. So if we pump our atmosphere up, we're in trouble. Watch. All right, I hope NASA and all the rest of them pay attention. I've shown that light are, is particles. There's absolutely no question. They're streaming out into the universe. We are scrubbing through them as the sun is. That's why the sun is millions of degrees out here, 7,000 on the surface, 100 on our surface, 2,700 out here. It's because as we spin and scrub all of the particles that are in space, primarily these, but also these over here, the outside ionosphere is continuously scrubbing through the other particles that are around it. It's, just, it's a push-to-shove scrub, spinning and spinning and pushing and shoving. 
That is what our heat is. Now, what does that mean to the expansion of our envelope? Well, it means that we have, the more we expand it, the more tumultuous it becomes, the more interaction, the more crushing, the more condensation, the more tornadic, you know, spinning vortexes, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, exactly what we're seeing. That is because of the expansion. I'm going to tell you right now, if 5G, well, it is, it's in that range, and that's why you have to have these towers everywhere. They are just expanding the envelope of gases. Now, if somebody can put up a counter to that, I, I'd like to hear it. And if, if it's as bad as I think it's going to be, and they want it everywhere all over the world, everybody's going to have 5G. Well, that's wonderful. It's great. I love 5G. I love the speed. But we got to figure a different way. This is, if it's going to destroy the Earth, I don't think that's a, a good resolution to get in high-speed video games. And this is what's going on. Now, let's go to the big board, and I'll show you what resonances are and why we have these different layers of atmosphere. And what, why blue sprites and red sprites and all the solar interactions that we see. All right, you see this? Microwave frequency that separates water molecules. The lowest resonance of water molecules is 22, basically, gigahertz. That frequency is almost 10 times higher than the operating microwave oven, 2.45 gigahertz. Well, this is where water breaks down. Your microwave in your oven is so focused that it can cause the water to excite so much that it it overheats and, and, and beats it up. But guess what? 5G uses 24 to 47 gigahertz. All right? Resonance frequency is 22, so we're up into the water breaker molecules frequency. And that's 5G. I'm, I'm not making this up. Somebody should look into it. That's all I'm saying. Look into it. We are in this this water breaker millimeter wavelength. It shakes and, and, and the water breaks up and it expands. If the expansion is what is causing our overheating, we're in big trouble. And it is. Let me show you why. All right. The only thing that makes anything glow is an energetic reaction. And I say reaction means push to shove back. That is the reaction. I push you, you shove me back. I glow a lot. You glow a little less, but you're going to glow. And this is what's going on. We're scrubbing through all the particles that are out here. As this thing moves through space, it's, it's smashing all of these arms back. They're being pushed back because of the spinning of this against the particles that are in space. It's spinning, crushing like a wrench. Absolutely devastatingly crushing the central core. Just like you took a wrench and went, Rrr! you could see it. And the, the reason these, these stripes are just exactly the interference patterns that I showed you created by repulsion, not interference. And everywhere you'll see these separations is because any energy, any energy at all, even waves, the same thing, is, there's going to be a, a trough in between. And that trough is literally the dark matter. It's the non-energetic portion. The energetic portion is here. The non-energetic portions are here. Now, if we came into a highly energetic portion and had to cross across it, we'd be in trouble. If we came into one that was empty and we could just come right into it and go into an empty spot, well, that would be wonderful. However, our atmosphere, I don't care how you plan it, our atmosphere is scrubbing through all of the particles that are in space. That they call it a vacuum. It's not a vacuum absolutely impossible. How, where do they think the light comes from that hits the earth? We know that the light is hitting the earth. We know it hits solar panels and makes the electrons move. Why? How do they think this stuff happens? This is what kills me. And they, oh yeah, we're going through the solar wind. Oh yeah, all this stuff. Oh yeah, yeah discharges of this and that. But they think it's a vacuum. What, 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 what happened there? That's my problem. And not to be able to talk about it and say, oh, no, no, you got to leave this to the experts. And they, just, they, they cannot talk because if they talk, then they're no, no longer an expert. And then they're pushed aside, too. So you get one guy in charge of basically everything or one like Fermilab saying this is what you have to believe to be smart. Here we are.